I just love that song. Hey everybody, Rod Rusty here, artist on Lockdown, hanging up, banging, episode number 62 with my good buddies and brothers, Carmine and Peace, Vinny Epicy, and uh, I am just so excited to see you guys again. We took uh, kind of a week off, we had a, uh, a special uh, edition last week, but this edition, very, very big show, as always, Paul Shortino, rock and roll legendary voice and a legend in her own right, manager, wife of Ronnie James Dio, Wendy Dio with us tonight, but first... Let me bring to the microphone a guy that I I hate to admit that I truly missed, Vinny Apice from Dio, Black Sabbath. Vinny, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing good, but I lost like a paisley blue uh, <laughs> sports jacket. It was in I thought you said like paisley blue like shorts or boxer shorts or something. Well, I had matching shorts. That that, that kind of looks like my jacket, dude. Uh, you know what? If I thought it would fit you, I'd give it to you, man. But I gotta say, and, and I, I hate doing this. You know, I hate two things. I hate like being like like warm to you, and hate and giving you compliments. <laughs> but hey, I gotta say, I sincerely missed you. Honestly, God, I sincerely missed you. I knew it. I knew you would. I and I'm coming. I'm coming. Hi, Heidi. I'm hey, coming Heidi. to visit you very soon. We're playing there on the second of October. Oh, that's the line. I am so that's excited, man. I tell you, it's it we is, added it a is horn truly... section too. Did you really? No. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, let's. <laughs> I fall for it every time. Let's bring our big brother Carmine to peace. You know him from Vanilla Fudge, of course, and um, so many other things. But uh, I had to call him today and let him. Wait, we lose Carmine. Where is he? Uh, because, you know, hey, we're, we're having some struggles out here. Hey, Carmine! Yeah, hey, man. How you hey, doing? Man. Well, I'm glad Vinny's playing there because I was playing there. Why, well, you're not I, playing there? I don't well, know. We're, we're, well, having a bit of problem with the COVID and the other theater. So yeah. we don't know. Well, hopefully we will. So who knows? We may have to can't move to two shows. I'm telling you, three, yeah. three acts today alone called to cancel. It's not even... You know, it's not even like the cities, and it's the acts themselves that are actually. Uh, we just did four shows uh, ten days ago. But you know. know what it is? You know what's, what? I'm what I'm finding. I don't know if you heard this or not, but you know what? One of the biggest problems is so the vaccine. The vaccine has almost become like an abortion issue. You're really like for totally for it or totally against it. You know, and yeah. what's happening? A lot of these acts are canceling because they've got infighting. You know, you got like half the band will get vaccinated, half the band won't, so they won't tour together, so they cancel the whole tour. I've had yeah. that three times today, just today, yeah, yeah. canceled. Yeah. Nah, we're going so, full swing. We're we're all uh, vaccinated. Yeah, we, we did uh, we did VIP safely. Everybody's are cool. you doing meet and no greets too? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Shit's yeah. great. And we're and we're going out in, in 19 days, 18 days. We we start a four city run. Yeah, and we got we got a bunch of VIPs sold, and you know we we learned when we did this thing in Nashville, we uh, how to be a little safe, you know, stay behind the table, you know, be like three or four feet. Actually, away we're going out. We have uh, complete plastic body suits. <laughs> <laughs> so and you never can, look better. Nothing gets in there. And they're gonna they're gonna be made of your paint. And more importantly, out. nothing's gonna get out <laughs> yeah. because where you guys have been. Yeah, I was overheating, but it was okay. I I just put up with it. We actually well, did sweet. our VIP pictures outside. Oh, makes sense. Makes we sense. signed stuff. They were away, and then we said, "Okay, take pictures." We went outside. They made a line. They stood in front of us, like Carmine <laughs> and I did, yeah. and we stayed in the back, so nobody's breathing Nobody on anybody. Nobody's breathing on anybody. Yeah. It works. Okay, well, it's that cool. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but there are people. You know, we just had Dice here, and absolutely nobody. We had Asia, absolutely nobody. We had John Anderson of Yes. Absolutely nobody. They're just 
getting in, doing a, as a little as possible, you like all the sound check real quick and back out. I mean, there's no, you know. Well, it's that's no fun. Weird, it's rock and roll. Yeah. I know. Come on. I, I'm with you. I'm, yeah. you know. I know. Oh, you're, you're right there. So I'm I, right I there, hope man. we end up doing it, you know. So. I, me too, because I got to say. I mean, we'll I end mean, up doing it at some point. Now, we're supposed to come back with Cactus in November. Why? Somebody, uh, somebody has COVID? No, no, it's a, the the other city of the other venue. Uh, is a problem. Yeah, my city. other one. We're 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 not sure if we're gonna open that up yet. So if I gotta pull hold on that, I had two shows of Vanilla Fudge and Robbie Krieger, The Doors together. Um, mm -hmm. So if we don't do the one, we may just move both. This is all happening. I'm telling you, it's you know when I was shut down, I had to move 116 shows. But not just once, some six times, <laughs> six yeah. times. Because yeah. remember, when we went down in March, it was like, well, you know what? Let's move the shows. Uh, let's move to end of April, beginning of May. We'll be fine, you know. Then July. Then it just kept on going. Now that we were back on, I'm everything was fine. Now I know. Now we're we're. Now who knows what's happening? But here's oh, the thing. Oh, forget it. Let's have Wait. some fun. The I hell with that fun. shit. Yeah, uh, let's have some fun. Let's play on, on Ron. Let's bring, on, let's bring on Wendy and Paul. Come this is on. a yeah. big deal let's show. Let's bring on Wendy and, and Paul. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's bring Wendy and Paul. Let's bring them both on. There's Wendy and there's Wendy. Paul Fertino. Hi. Hey, Hi, how Wendy. you doing? I'm just concerned who's singing the song that I had sung before. Is that James? Oh, that's, that's Jimmy Queen. That's Jim oh, Queen. Oh, that's nice that, to that know. Was, that was, we did a live version <laughs> of that, a tribute to Ronnie on, was it Ronnie's birthday? Hey. Hey, Paul, we erased you. I know. It sounds like it. <laughs> it's a lip sync. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was going, Paul, that Paul wrote sound the like song. Me. Who is that? <laughs> we, we wrote that song. Paul wrote the lyrics to that song. And I remember the day we did it because we were going to write it about Halloween. You remember Monsters and Heroes? Yeah, and then Paul absolutely. said, I want to write this about Ronnie, you know? So, and actually it took some of Ronnie's great lines and intertwined them with the storyline. So basically, yeah. yeah, it's it's some of the songs that actually Benny recorded with Ronnie. There's some lines yeah. in there that yeah. uh, that were a tri it, it was totally a tribute to Ronnie. Yeah, you this know? is a this is a total knit family here. I know Wendy's mm -hmm. you can see 1970, it. 1943, I think it was, wasn't it? Forty three. <laughs> uh -huh. Only kidding, yeah. Wendy. I'm only kidding. Thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I know Wendy from when she, she first came to L.A. So does Paul. Hey, Carmine. She's Why? not talking to you now. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but I got oh. I got a really I got a very very important question because I love the book. I want to talk about uh, Rainbow in the Dark. It's some great stuff. But the the most important question, one of the most important questions, is the fact that. You were kind of not really into Ronnie at the beginning, or or not, or maybe didn't see a future because he was shorter than you. And I have right. I have to find out about this because I'm a little bit um, uh, uh, what's the word vertically challenged. So I'm very <laughs> interested in your answer here. <laughs> Is that well, true? Yeah, absolutely. Richie was introduced. Richie Blackmore introduced me to Ronnie, and I uh, said You're a bit short for me. I don't know about that, but. You know, I talked to him, and I, I think I fell in love with his brain because he was very, he was funny, he had great humor, um, and he was just, you could talk to him about any subject whatsoever. He's very, very intelligent. And so really, you're saying I've got a chance? You know, maybe. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, the, the autobiography is, is incredible. Um, which is it's just interesting to say autobiography because he did do it. He started it very, very early. How did that come to be? How did that, I mean, did he just well, sit down? Ron, and, Ron, yeah. before we go, let's tell everybody what we're talking about. Well, it's called Rainbow in the Dark. Yeah, I have just happen to have my copy right here. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah, and it's... Uh, and it's something that not only, I mean, it, it is an autobiography, even though it just came out relatively uh, uh, kind of recently, but yeah. uh, he, 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 he did actually write it, started to write it. When did yeah. he start to write it? And what made him actually, because rock and roll is not known to be the kind of, okay, I'm going to sit down and, and write stuff down. You know, they're not known for that. But he did. How did that all come to be? Um, I think he just started scribbling stuff down. and He'd write a chapter here and a chapter there, and then he'd 
bring it was all handwritten and you bring it into the office and my secretary would type it up and then he'd go on tour and then he'd write a bit more and it was nothing really that he had he wanted to write a book but it wasn't something like okay i'm going to do this now because ronnie anyone who knew ronnie whatever he was doing that was it he stopped so he would do it when he was off the off the road and um i had actually had a publishing deal for him while he was still alive um, and then, of course, uh, when he passed away, I just chuffed it away. Uh, but uh, when he was sick, he started, because he wrote the book up until almost the end of Rainbow. And then uh, when he was sick, he would scribble little notes and different things and put stuff on his computer about what he wanted to say and with different things and stuff. And then, um, of course, when he passed away, I, I, put, I didn't put it out. And then... Years went by and I kept saying I was going to put it out, I was going to put it out. And then Mick Wall from, um, from UK, who was a good friend of ours and has written many, many books, um, and uh, he, he uh, said, well, you've got to get this book out, Wendy. And I go, well, you know, I need some help. So he was obviously the person to help. And I said, and I want it to be still in Ronnie's own words. So what we did was we took a bunch of the scribbles that he'd left, and then we went back into the archives and found interviews that Ronnie had done at different times of the place. And it always was going to be starting in, in, 19, in you know, ending in 1986, because that's what he wanted to do. And that was what he wrote in the beginning, that, you know, he was at Madison Square Gardens and um, he... Um, he asked a journalist asked him how you know how did you get started he was going to give the usual answer and he thought how did I get started and that's what made him think about writing a book um, but he always wanted it to end in 1986 because um, it, the last it was where they say uh, oh you're going back on stage I can't answer that I have to go and work and that was the end of it so I don't know if he intended to write another book after that or whether he just intended to finish it in 1986 but that's what happened and at, at that garden show, probably Vinny was playing with him, right? Uh, Vinny was playing with him. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Yeah. And we, you, yeah, we only ball. played Long Island. Rough Cut warmed up for Dio in yeah. Long Island. Yeah. NASA Coliseum. Yeah. No, yeah, we had a... Well, we had an offer. Um, we had an offer for uh, Meadowlands for twice as much money, but Ronnie always wanted to play at Madison Square Garden. He played there with Sabbath before, but he wanted his own name up there uh, in yeah. uh, Madison Square Gardens, and so. Uh, you know, because he'd always walked from, you know, when he was trying to get a demo deal, uh, he'd drive down from Cortland, upstate New York, to New, to New York City, and, and you know, this is before Rainbow, before anything, and, and before Elf even, and try to get a demo deal, and he'd always look up at Madison Square Garden and go, one day I want my name up there. Well, the night that he did have his name up there, we got there, and this is obviously before cell phones, and he said, when, let's take a picture, and I said, oh, I forgot the camera. So we never, <laughs> ever got a, we never got a photo oh. of his name on Madison Square Garden. Oh. Well, he was well, well deserved. Well, even that. even I did that when we played with Rod. There was a billboard on on Broadway, a giant billboard which says New York Welpkins, Carmine, Rod, all these names. And I, and I had my parents, and you know my parents. We had my parents in the limo, and we took a picture of it. You know, we had a we did have the camera. We, we had a picture, and my, my mother and father were so proud, you know, that there it was on Broadway, you know. Awesome. Something. That's great. Yeah, I read yeah, that part I, of the book. It's awesome. I learned some yeah. stuff about the book I didn't know. You know, you know what? You need to tell the story about your mom when she went into the record store and she said her son plays in a famous band and they believed her, and then she went in and said another famous band and they didn't believe her. Tell the yeah, story. Right. Oh, I yeah. don't know that one. Vinny knows that one. You know right, what, you know I don't remember that. Your you know mom that? told your mom told me that that oh, she went into the oh, record really? store and she said, "Oh yeah, my my, my son plays in that band, Vanilla Fudge," and uh, they were all all excited about it. And then she went in there and said, "Oh my my son plays in that band, Black Sabbath." And they went, "Yeah, right." <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then she'd go in she'd go into record stores and move the albums to the front. Yeah. Oh, we all, we all do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you look around, make Typical sure you're Typical Italian watching, mom. <laughs> and you move the album to the front. Oh, That's an Italian yeah. mom right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always uh -huh. looking out yeah. for their boys. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, you mentioned uh, opening for Dio at the time. I mean, was that, was that a time that you had known Ronnie before, or was that one of your first experiences? 
Uh, actually, Ronnie took rough cut into the studio. Actually, then he, I think, came out to a bar that I was playing out in uh, Torrance. And Ronnie showed up and um, they were checking us out. And, uh, and we went in the studio and did some demos and uh, through Wendy as well. Because I was sharing with you earlier that uh, I had met Wendy long before I had had a chance to meet Ronnie. Was a big fan of Ronnie's, and uh, actually used to do "Kill the King" from Rainbow in a in a cover band. And I was playing in a cover band, and uh, Wendy was looking to manage an up and coming band, and she was already dealing with Ronnie and. Uh, Ronnie, and I think it was Vinny showed up at this dump that I was playing at. And uh, <laughs> next thing I know, that Ronnie came to a rehearsal, and uh, I guess it was Dave Alfred that did bothered Ronnie all his life. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, my <laughs> and, uh, Dave, Dave, Dave is the drummer, so and uh, of Rough Cut. And uh, anyways, uh, he told D David that if you ever found a good singer, give me a shout. So I guess. Uh, you know, uh, Ronnie was interested in uh, doing some stuff with us. And when he got interested in put, putting the band together and uh, we went in the studio and uh, I'd actually met Wendy uh, probably when I was she was just a young and as well was married to a good friend of mine who was uh, in a band called Mama Lion. And uh, they had went to Britain and um, when they were having a Halloween party and uh, in Highland Park and I showed up and it was the first time I met Wendy and so I was in this contract with these guys one of the guys was a uh, director for the Charlie's Angels his dad also was uh, the first director to take a Route 66 on the road and so I was in this contract where they owned everything including anything that I I, I owned and uh, Wendy and Ronnie uh, we're getting me out of this mess with Stan Diamond. And we were sitting at the Imperial Palace on a Chinese restaurant on Ventura Boulevard. And uh, it dawned on me that I had met Wendy a long time ago and uh, yeah. during our lunch break there. And uh, they got me out of that mess. Uh, and because I was always so eager to sign. Boom, yeah. boom, boom. My first yeah. record. Don't read it that time. Yeah. yeah we, I never I a, read anything. I, first Ron has I, a paper for you to sign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first record, actually, I did. I was 17, and uh, Snuff Garrett, who uh, did Liza Minnelli, Sonny and Cher, and people like that. Uh, I was signed to Bell Records, and, of course, Vicki Lawrence came out with That's the Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia, and that Georgia. was the night the lights went out with Paul Shortino's record on Billboard, 22 really? with a bullet. But yeah. Uh, yeah, somebody just recently sent me the demo. I didn't even have it. I did right. an interview and they so said- your me. record was knocked out by, that's the night that the lights went out in Georgia? Yeah, absolutely. It I was, don't know how I would feel about that. Like it was, it was knocked out by a Zeppelin. <laughs> Well, I know. You know? Oh, Vicky yeah. Lawrence, I don't Vicky know. Vicky Lawrence. How do you come back from that? I, exactly. Hey, she, hey, she's really good. Come on. Oh, come I on. love her. <laughs> I've had her here. Yeah. She was here as, what's, what is that, Grandma? What does she play? Well, of she had a show had... called Mama's Show or something Mama, like that. Mama. Of yeah. course you had her there. Of course uh, But it was really there. interesting. I was doing an interview with a guy, and he says, I got the 45. I says, you're kidding. Wow. He says, if you send me something, I'll send it to you. And then I got the 45 a Apple record player. And I had to go get a record player. And I did another interview. And the guy says, I got an MP3. I said, I haven't heard that song since uh, I think I was 17 years old. <laughs> hey, Paul, that dump you played, I got my name up on the marquee. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Look at that. That's the dump. That's 50 the people. That's funny. Wendy, yeah, in, so in the, I wish, uh, I actually wish uh, Ronnie would have uh, uh, produced some of the Rough Cut stuff. He did some of the earlier stuff that was released on uh, The Greatest. But I think uh, Wendy, uh, we, she, she kind of, actually, when I go in the studio, I started, at that point in my life, I started sounding like Ronnie. So she thought maybe yeah. get somebody else uh a different producer to get in there and i'm still kind of yeah. finding myself playing in a cover band you know you start sounding like trying to sound like everybody who who's whose songs out on the uh on yeah. the charts and uh so you know 
going in the studio. We went into my folk studio and did some stuff. And uh, uh, I'm so grateful for meeting Ronnie and Wendy in my life. Uh, sure. It changed everything. I got to meet people like Carmine, Benny, Glenn Hughes. I mean, people, uh, you know, David Coverdale, people that I, I, I saw from the other side of the, mm -hmm. the stage being a fan, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, here I was here I was living well, with these folks, you know, I mean, living the life with these folks, yeah. which was which was really amazing. And I was able friends. to watch them put the whole uh, Holy Diver thing together, wow. uh, which was That's which was a trip. Well, you know, we all know that that Ronnie, well, you know, he's got this persona of major rock and roller. But at the end of the day, he really wasn't the sex, drugs and rock and roll kind of guy, a homebody, uh, very focused. And Wendy um, is, is, you know, he's, he was always writing. Obviously, he was writing his autobiography at the time as well. But uh, is, there, uh, is there very much um, uh, unrecorded or un-whatever uh, material around? Does he have a lot of, did he write a lot of songs he didn't finish? Is there some of that material that's still hanging out there? Uh, this We've just actually gone through the vault right now with uh, Wynn Davis, which is a... a a uh, engineer of ours that he used many many times as a great friend and uh, right now he's going through uh, a lot of the stuff and we've we found a few pieces of, um, uh, of material I know that uh, before he passed away he was writing something with Craig uh, with Craig Goldie and also with Doug Aldridge and uh, I think there's some demo stuff and there's a whole bunch of Akai stuff that he would always demo in his own studio before he'd go into the real studio. Right. There's a lot of that stuff. So, but you know, we have to go through it and listen to it properly. And I'm using Wynn Davis as, as you know, his ears because uh, my ears, I, I, you know, I, I need to have something. If it's going to go out, it has to be something that Ronnie would approve of because I don't want to put something out that he wouldn't have approved of. And so, you know, I mean, I know what I like, but I, w I would rather have some professional like Wynn Davis listen to it. Before yeah. it goes out, makes a lot of sense. There, there was that song Electra. Is, is, did you find that? No, that's been out actually. We we have that came that, out. Uh, that that came out nice. on a bonus. Yeah, we've got a few of those um, because we've got uh, Rhino is re-releasing uh, all the six albums that they have <clears throat> next year with bonus tracks and different things. And we're, we're finding some live uh, some live stuff for different, I think it's Seattle and different places that they play. And also what else is there that we can put on there that, that you know, that, and do a nice box set as well. All right. Oh, that'll cool. be exciting. You know, the box set, you can include the book. Could, you could yeah. indeed. And now I've got I, document, I, an, an I've got documenting. Book. Yeah, no, I I have, I have, I have, audio book is out. It is audio book is out actually. You know, going um, back to the book, going back to the book, what, what would you say? And there's a there's a couple things uh, in there, but what would you say is the most controversial uh, uh, element of the book or passage of the book? Mm. <laughs> there's a lot of controversial yeah, stuff in there actually. One. Richie Blackmore's um, wife running over his guitars. <laughs> oh, Babs, Babs. Wow. That's, that's probably, yes. Yeah, I remember him telling us that story, you both telling us that story. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know? Tell us all that story. Yeah, that was a really good story, actually. I think she took all his guitars, his gold records out. Yeah, she, and, what, uh, what was she pissed off at him about? I forgot. I, I don't remember what I, I don't know, but she threw it. I remember that she threw it all because... They all used to go to the Rainbow. We all went to the Rainbow all the time. And uh, I remember hearing about it at the Rainbow that she threw all the guitars out and ran Well, she didn't, she didn't only do that. Another time she lined up all his gold records, his guitars, and then put his car, and his car went straight over everything and right through the gate as well. Oh, smashed all his oh. car up without, without opening the electric gate. So she, you know, you didn't want to mess with her. She was... Yeah. Uh, she was I a think big, that was the story a, that you guys told me, shared with me. <laughs> yeah, she was, a big, she was a big German woman. She was really yeah, she big. Yeah, she was a feisty German. She was very pretty. Very, really pretty. Big, very, very pretty. Buxom. Buxom is the word. She's yeah. like yes. uh, the girl in uh, in Rocky with the one uh, that's real tall. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bridget Nielsen. Yeah, yeah. Bridget Nielsen. That's something. That's, like, that's yeah. a good mm -hmm. comparison. Good yeah, comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Good comparison. Yeah. You know, I asked Paul. Paul and uh, and Wendy both. Uh, Nineteen eighty five. We are the world is you know around coming out around that time. Everyone's getting into that. So you guys come out with this 
hearing aid uh, project. Uh, 40 or so musicians all singing on it. Really amazing uh, uh, lineup. Um, yeah. How did how did it uh, come about? Tell me about the day of recording. Who was cool? Who wasn't cool? That kind of. I know Paul, and obviously one year uh, deep involved with it. Well, uh, it Wendy can. actually, I'll to let her start with this story, and then I'll yeah, jump in um, here. And sure. I, well, actually, it was Vivian and Jimmy that got it together because um, we are the world was out, and I think Ronnie had wanted to get involved in that, but you know, with dirty nice. Is it Vivino? Huh? Jimmy who? Jimmy, Jimmy Bain. Bain. Jimmy, Jimmy Bain. Bain. Jimmy Bain. Jimmy Bain. Yeah, Jimmy Bain. Bain. He's, Bain. he's the uh, bass player at D.O. Right. Yeah. Right, right, Jimmy but Bain. before that, I think Ronnie had wanted to get involved in, in We Are The World, and then we were really dirty, nasty, heavy metal people that they didn't want to deal with. And then I think it was uh, Vivian and, and uh, Jimmy uh, got involved somehow, and then they started putting some music down. And then Ronnie took over from that and then decided we had a whole board. There was like 14 people on the board and uh, Ken Craven was on the board and a whole bunch of people. It was, and, like a, uh, it was an actual organization you had to create. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we put it together and uh, uh, that, well, Paul can tell you he was there, but nobody's ego was there. Everybody was oh. very cool and very, it was amazing. It was, the, it, the it biggest, really was. The biggest uh, stars there. There were all the rock stars there, but everybody yeah. was going crazy. Over there was no uh, spinal everybody tap. Was, everybody yeah. Yeah, it was spinal tap. They even yeah. there were there. And they came in. We're all going. Yeah. Oh man, is that? Uh, yeah. What's a Derek? Actually, and, uh, uh, Nigel. I, I had we just, Rough Cut just released an album, so I was like in awe, you know, yeah. and hanging out with Neil Sean and Carmine. Me I, oh, oh, he's, oh, Paul, what was that? He gets very <laughs> emotional when he tells the story. Whenever he says Carmine. Uh-oh, we lost your vocal. Paul, we lost your vocal. We lost your vocal. We lost your mic. Come back. Come back. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, anyways, I, I, yeah, um, actually, when I, the first day that everybody showed up, actually, to do the background vocals, and they had already been tracking guitars and, and the rhythm tracks, the, uh, all the lead vocals were cut at Rumbo Studios, and everything else was tracked at A&M. So we were all hanging out the Holiday Inn uh, upstairs and uh, waiting for limos to take us to A&M Records. And the first thing happens is Jimmy hands me a Jack, Jack, a Jim Beam and a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> He's Jimmy. and I'm nervous as hell. And and if you look at the picture, I now think I'm in the in the in the group shot because I think I was in the bathroom. You know, because every time I turn around, Jimmy was handing me a drink because I was so nervous about being around all of these great rock stars. And here, you know, here I'm nobody, you know, and uh, was uh, very gracious and humble to even be a part of the of, of being one of the main vocalists. Uh, and um, we all kind of had to sing the whole song. So yeah. and and same with guitar players had to play, you know, all the way through it. And the genius part about it was Ronnie taking the best of everybody's performance and putting it together. And uh, it was quite an experience. Uh, I'll never forget it. And uh, I'm so grateful that I was a part of it. I remember and, I, was on, I was on the road with King Cobra and I flew in mm -hmm. on two days off just to be part of that. And uh, I was blown away, you know, because yeah. I knew everybody. And I met the Spinal Tap guys too, and that was that was pretty cool. The backing track was done at uh, Sound City, mm -hmm. and it was uh, you Ronnie and Sing, me you and Frankie. Frankie Benelli playing at the same time, which was yeah. back pretty then cool. we recorded both drummers at the same time. It was really yeah. cool. So Frankie the technology obviously was so much different then too. Man, it's amazing yeah. he pulled it off. Yeah. But that's both of us on that track. And oh yeah, great. yeah, yeah. That I forgot about the Sound City. I thought. I know that we did all the backing vocals and guitar solos at A&M. Yeah. And then we do some gigs. Weren't there some gigs like at Santa Monica Civic or something? No, no. There was uh, one. Irvine Meadows. Oh, was, it was, Irvine yeah, Meadows. And there was another one somewhere. I'm not quite sure. It's like in... Uh, Kevin DeBro was what? still alive then. When yeah. yeah the Irvine there was, Meadows. It was near the Hollywood Bowl on the other side. What was that place? Oh, the Greek uh, Theater. The no, it wasn't theater. a great. It wasn't a no, uh, no, no. Ford it was Theater or something? Oh, the Starlight Theater? I think it was a Starlight Bowl. Starlight. 
Oh, I think, oh, I think yeah. it was that dumpy oh, yeah. place Paul played. Yes. He <laughs> hey, I remember Irvine Meadows. Yeah. I can't remember yeah. the guy's name, but I've never said this to anyone else. They were going out. I had joined Quiet Riot then, and we were doing this thing at Irvine Meadows where everybody was involved. And the guy's name was Joel. And I looked at him and I says, hey, break a leg. And the sir, as soon as he got on stage with oh, the rough no. cut guys, he turned around. He broke his leg that. and they brought him out on a gurney. And he looked at me and he says, I'm suing everybody. And I went, dude, I, I didn't I didn't mean for you to really break a leg. So I have never said that thing. I've never said that cliche ever again. Because the, the dude really broke his leg. <laughs> you know, I uh, I had Frank Sinatra Jr. at the theater here, and you know, a very reverend who was there by himself, twenty seven people on or uh, an orchestra, ready to ready to walk on, ready to start. I'm walking past him. I said, Mr. Sinatra, thank you for being here at the Arcata Theater. Break a leg, and he grabs me, and he's like, <laughs> What did you say? Break a leg, sir. A great night. Goes, what the? What could happen if I would break a leg right now? He was yelling at me. I'm like. I thought that's what you say to people. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll well, never I say that again said it either. Since. I know the feeling. <laughs> no, never. You know, we brought yeah. up uh, we brought up Spinal Tap a little bit, Paul. I mean, you know, you're obviously in the film. And tell, what was that like when during the filming? Because those personalities. Oh, the let me tell you, this is a great story because <laughs> Rough Cut actually hasn't been signed yet, and Wendy puts out. You know, all these pictures, uh, Jake was, Jakey e. Lee was in the band and uh, they saw an advertisement in one of the local papers and we were playing the Troubadour. So they came down and they said, hey, you know, why don't you, you and you, and whoever wants to show up at casting call. And I think we went, it was at either a Denny's or a Norm's on Sherman Way. Oh, yeah, right. You were in, you were in Spinal Tap. Yes, yes, I was. Yeah, I played yeah. Duke Fame. Uh, yeah, so, no, I so anyways... To make a long story endless, I show up in yeah. white leather with black boots in my own in my own clothes, and uh, casting goes. There's Duke Fame, <laughs> and the other and Jake didn't show up yet. Uh, Dave Alfred hadn't showed up. Casting, I showed up, talked to him a little bit. Everything was ad lib. So then we, the day of the shoot, here I'm sitting with. A rock star's wife, Ronnie James Dio's wife, Wendy Dio, and this girl who is in the in the scene with me, who actually was dating Jackson Brown, and he left her for Daryl Hannah. So here yeah. you have two two rock ladies talking together, and then I'm looking around and I'm going, you know, I looked at Wendy and I said, these guys are having a bad hair day. I didn't know they had <laughs> wigs on, right? <laughs> uh, so. <clears throat> we break for lunch, and I'm sitting next to Rob Reiner, and across from me is Michael McKeon, Christopher Guest, and Harry Shear, and I think the drummers at that time was Rick Parnell. Right. And so, anyways, I'm looking at Rob Reiner, and I'm I'm trying to sell him Rough Cut songs because Wendy's still shopping Rough Cut, trying to get a deal, and Warner Brothers is interested, and a few other labels. And so here he's, no, no, we've got the material, kid. We've got the material. And I look over at the other guys, and I go, you know, you guys look a lot like the guys that are having a bad hair day. And I felt about that big. <laughs> and then I got to do my scene, which was, you know, about that big. But what's, what was really interesting was when we went out on the road, Wendy got it rough cut. As soon as we got the record came out, we went out with Crocus and Accept. And yeah. we didn't even get a line check. And it was in Chicago, of all places, that the road manager for Crocus came up and... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We lost Paul. Oh, lost Paul. man, left us oh, hanging. Goodness. The cliffhanger. Let's just, let's just the cliffhanger. The cliffhanger. Well, you know well, what? I, I just want to say one thing about Spinal Tap. I was on the road with King Cobra. And after playing with Ozzy and Rod Stewart and all the arenas and everything, and here we are playing, getting lost, going to the theater, you know, going downstairs, getting lost, going to the stage. I was living yeah. Spinal Tap. I was living oh, Spinal Tap. I, so I didn't I, like uh, that movie because I was living it. Until well, you know, I saw Paul. It? Then I saw hey. Paul. I go, whoa, there's Paul. 
<laughs> it's followed me around forever. But that in Chicago, it was really interesting because we're in the dressing room, which is just nothing. And we wouldn't get a line check because there was three bands on the bill. So it was us right up against the monitors, except and then Crocus. So the road manager goes, aren't you Duke fame? Because they were showing it. They were showing the movie. They had it on the bus. They were showing it at all of the Howard Johnson's and Holiday Inn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, uh, the road manager goes, you're Duke fame, aren't you? And I go, yeah, I'm Duke fame. Uh, he says, yeah. well, the guys in Crocus want to meet you. <laughs> and so I got backstage. Oh I got to meet God. Mark Sirachi and all the guys in the band. And oh, the next funny. thing you know, we get a line check. And we went from... We went from Budweiser to Heineken. I couldn't believe it. So, <laughs> so you got. So there are were, some pluses to that. You were able. They they allowed you to take it to eleven. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. There were times that uh, we couldn't find our way to the stage, just like that movie. Yeah, yeah, I tell you, yeah, all yeah. my life it's been Spinal Tap since that movie. Yeah, man. And uh, what a what a great time it was doing it. I tell you, oh, it really and was. Still, it's one of those things that that stays with you, and you're happy about it. Yeah, I just I just recently got an eight cent mail, uh, eight cent check in the mail. Actually, that's eight times <laughs> the check that Vinny gets. Oh, oh, dude. I got oh, three yeah. of those. I got three of those. I got fourteen cents, eight cents, nine cents, and ten cents. <laughs> they should just let it all add up so, so yeah, at least yeah. the postage can exactly. pay for it. They <clears throat> lose money on that. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, but maybe, actually, uh, if it wasn't for Ronnie and Wendy, I, I, you know, who knows? I might still be playing in bars. Yeah. You know. And, uh, yeah, I just that's the thing about Wendy just love that you're you're keeping you know his name his his legacy alive and um, I, I wanted to ask you about the whole management thing because you were his wife before manager correct yes mm -hmm. and and I love the statement uh, if you don't mind me saying um, when he was asked why <laughs> in the world would you have your wife manage you. And he said, do you want me to say it or do you want to say it? He said, I'd rather get, I'd rather be, get screwed than get screwed by the way. Something like what? He said, I'd rather said. get screwed by my wife than my manager. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> what was, I, but really, all kidding aside, I mean, that's, yeah, that's freaking Ronnie James deal that you're asked to manage. I mean, that's a big thing. I mean, did you, were you intimidated at all? Were you like, Honey, I, I don't know. Well, now, don't Wendy's not one of those people, I, as far as I, from my perspective, she was one of those people. She's like a, she's an Aries fire sign. Yeah. She went for it. She, uh, she I'm, a, just, I'm, a, I'm a control freak and so is Ronnie. So yeah, there you go. Yep. Huh. Yeah, they well, probably. That doesn't always heads. work. That, that, that's supposed to be a yin yang, a two control freaks together. No, I don't it, was, know. it was a yin yang. <laughs> <laughs> it was a yin yang. People used to run and hide when we start arguing. <laughs> so I have a question. Uh, I was reading the book, and uh, so Rainbow originally was the Elf band without the yes. guitar player. And then Correct. when did when did Cozy come in? Because well, uh, because Richie asked me to join Rainbow. Uh huh. I well, couldn't what do it. Was Why didn't the, you, uh, Vin, uh, Carmine? I, I didn't couldn't you? do it. I I was assigned to MCA with a KGB band. And in those days, when you sign to a label like that, you can't just get off. Leave, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I yeah. couldn't do it. And, yeah, and well, I was wondering when that all happened. Well, he kind of, uh, Richie would kind of get rid of, uh, you know, there was all Elf except for uh, him, of course. And so gradually he got rid of, like, the drummer, and then he got rid of, like, oh, the bass player. Oh, he got rid of, you, you know, he got rid of everybody one by one and got more people in. Yeah, and then got rid of them one by one. So, you yeah. know, I mean, it was like, um, it was just a, a, all going through all the time. And this one, that one, this one, that one, you know. Yeah. And uh, I think he took, well, he took the band, Ronnie's band, Elf, but I think he always decided that he was going to pick his own members after that. So they kind yeah. of all yeah. went by the wayside. <clears throat> yeah. Now, if I could just, now, I don't know if I'm saying something wrong here. So if I need to get spanked, tell me, because I don't know inner stuff, but... You know, have you been like it? I don't want to say compared because you're, you're, you're two of your own people. You know, Sharon Osbourne, kind of along the same lines with Ozzy. No, you, no, no. Different. She's not like Sharon Osbourne. This is Trust why me. I want to know. I want to know the difference. Well, she's not. 
Sharon and I were the only women managers at the time. And when we started managing, it was a man's world. And I think we just took it kind of differently. You know, men would tell me, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And I just smile sweetly and do what I wanted to do. I think Sharon would just tell them to go F themselves. So that was the kind <laughs> yeah, of difference yeah, between yeah. the two of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah she did, no, job. She did yeah. a really good job for Ozzy. I mean, she did. Well, you're both are pioneers as being women in a man's world, that's for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I, Paul, I got to tell you that, um, you know, I'm in my little world here, I'm known as a rock and roll dude with all the stuff that I do. I don't just wear goofy jackets, but I love the rock and roll stuff. <laughs> but I got to say, I got to say. Right. Hey, wait, but, they, but Ron used to wear T-shirts, and then Vinny got him out of that uh, habit quick. Uh, I love the jacket. You know, I got a Thank jacket you. similar, but I... I, I, I <laughs> It's beautiful. What can I say, Ron? Thank it's you. Well, there's, awesome. There's, there's a couch somewhere missing its upholstery. I can say that right now. <laughs> ah, I love it. But I, uh, you know, a little known fact that there's some songs that I really, really love from a, I don't know, classic standpoint that's not necessarily a rock and roll song. And one of my favorite songs, Judy Collins, Judy Garland actually did as well. A few of those people, 60s, 70s, uh, did Send in the Clowns. And a beautiful rendition. It was, you know, Carol Burnett did it. I mean, those kind. That's a. Yeah. That's such a. But then I see a video of you doing it. Love your rendition. How did? What made you pick that song? Well, it was. It's an interesting story because uh, Vinnie Paul played. Oh, we only have we only have fifteen minutes, Paul. <laughs> okay, it'll make. Come I'll on, it's a good story. I'll make it quick. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, Vinnie Paul comes to me and he says, you know, Carrot Top wants you know his assistant wants uh to do you know a, a song for him and uh he played me this judy collins song and he says mm -hmm. what are we going to do with this and uh i says well i know this guitar player ira black mm -hmm. and so i got a hold of ira black and he came up with the arrangement so we started out the front like the traditional sinatra you know with the uh you know the orchestra and then we go into the heavy metal version of it so actually we actually recorded that about 12 years ago when Vinny uh Vinny paul abbott was still alive and uh we actually did it for carrot top and uh, he wanted to do something like what sam kennison did with uh you know uh wild what thing. was wild, wild thing. thing so yeah. yeah anyways we tracked it back then and then we decided to do a video of it and uh, Marco Mendoza came in and played bass on it. And uh, I, did, I just released it back in 2020 when uh, COVID hit April 24th on a Shortino Make-A-Wish record. And uh, this uh, guy named Gary Arona did the filming of it. And uh, some of the people that did the lighting are uh, a lot of people that do Cirque shows. Because I was in a show here for seven years called Rating the Rock Vault which yep. was a lot of different rock and roll guys doing the classic rock songs of the 60s, 70s, and into the 80s. And, uh, yeah, that version is pretty trippy. It, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's our own it's version. The, the Some people like it. Some people don't, you know. No, that's a great version, audio, audibly, audio-wise, but also visual. I like the video. I mean, Carrot Top is a big friend of the show here, big friend of uh, uh, Carmine's for sure, and... Uh, and well, I, I met I met Carrot Top through Paul. Oh, yeah. I'm and Paul, we just we yeah. just got we just got uh, Ron into see Carrot Top two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, I was I was in Vegas last week yeah. and I saw Carrot. And afterwards, we hung out and I got a little, actually I don't want to say it, but I'm gonna have to send it to you, Carmen. I we uh, uh, Carrot Top and myself made a video about announcing him on the show. So whenever we're ready to put him on the show, I got a okay. video of us Great. talking about Great. next week kind of Good. thing. I got to show you. Well, you know, he, when we first recorded that, he would come down, there would be a bucket that would come down in the middle yeah. of the show. Yeah. And he would take out a thing, a crown royal, and then pass out shots. Yep. So he would bring that, that when the bridge part of, you know, of sending the clowns, would that part would come down he would bring that down he had it he had actually had it in the show for quite a while then he paul abbott had saw his show probably 250 sometimes he had <laughs> it he, he actually had a carrot top room at his house right and uh he loved he loved carrot top in fact right. there's a real quick story about him carrot top talking to oprah winfrey 
and this 18 wheeler shows up with a sauna and he goes, are you uh, Scott Thompson? Cause that's carrot tops real name. And he goes, yeah, he's talking to Oprah. And he goes, well, we have a, uh, we have a sauna here for you. He goes, I didn't order a sauna. He goes, Oh, well, this is your sauna. He goes, no, I didn't order a sauna. He says, do you know a Vinnie Paul Abbott? He goes, yes, I do know Vinnie Paul Abbott. He says, well, this is your birthday gift from Fenny Paul Abbott. And he, and he goes, you know, it's great to know rock stars because they give great gifts. And that was that was a great little story about, you know, uh, Vinny giving him a, a gift. Vinny, Vinny was a good guy. He was a really most, cool dude. Most Vinnies are. They really, really yes. are. Yes, that's right. And Don't forget that, it. I have Vinny that, you know, we do this uh, We do this every week, guys, hanging and banging. Artists on lockdown every Thursday. And every week we got great, great guests like tonight. Next week we got a couple more. Let's go to, uh, we got a commercial, I think. Oh, who did this? Carmine, did you do this one or, or did Vinny do this one? I, I think I did this one. I did this one. Oh, you, oh Vinny did this one. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Come on, PCF for Hanging and Banging. September 9th, we have some friends. Waddy Wattel, I know Waddy, guitar player who played with Stevie Nicks and other people. He's been around for a long time. Uh, I know him since the days in 1966 when we were the Pigeons, and he was in a group called the Offings, I believe. And I know him a long time. Great player, great sideman, he's played with a lot of people. Also, Danny Kochmeyer, who, uh, Danny played with a lot of people too, but he's uh, written songs with Henley, Don Henley, that is, and you know, lots of people. So, two great session guys on Hanging and Banging, September the 9th. All right, that's 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, and 4 o'clock where Vinny is on Hanging and Banging, Artists on Lockdown uh, on Facebook. Come on a piece official on Facebook. See you there, okay? Ciao. Look how freaking dapper you are there, my yeah, friend. Looking, yeah. The I hair is working. The glasses old, are baby. working. I got to tell Wendy yeah, something. Tight. You know, Paul sings with King Cobra with me, as you know, because we did that song, Monsters and Heroes, that we mm -hmm. used for this theme. So um, we went to Sweden Rock Festival play, and we decided Paul was going to do a, a acapella vocal of Heaven and Hell, right? Just him and the audience. Right. And then so we did that. And then we went right into Monsters and Heroes. So that whole little area was all about Ronnie, you know, oh. and we had like 8000 people singing oh. Heaven and Hell and 8000 people singing Monsters and Heroes. Oh, look at that. Wow. Well, he That's a great that. shot of you, too. Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Look, at that. Oh. Wow. Wow. look at that long flowing hair. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you know, too, Wendy, but that long flowing hair. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> you know, that was a you great know shot. You know what? Anyway, happened? so that was a great. It was, and we just released it as a live album. And yeah. uh, oh, great! Paul great. did such a great, great, great job on it. I, I get chills yeah. when I listen to it. You know. Oh, yeah. The yeah. picture of Ronnie playing his trumpet. I still have that trumpet. Yeah. That's really? really? Wow! I oh, do. you do? Mm -hmm. Wow! I do. Yeah. I That's one we thing played. we also had in common. I played the trumpet as well, so oh, it's oh, good oh, for oh. the diaphragm. Yeah. I took that picture. <laughs> really? Uh, it's great, great You know what? There's got to be... What would you say, Wendy? I see that trumpet. You say you've got that trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, what would be uh, your most... We, we've asked this before on the show. If, God forbid, the house was on fire, you had to run out, you had to grab your most precious um, bit of memorabilia of Ronnie. What would that be? There's the book. God. Oh, yeah. let's That's see. a tough oh, question. God. That's a tough question. There's a lot of yeah. stuff here, you know. Um, probably, probably actually one of his guitars that he has is a, uh, is Samba's guitar. In your house. You know, did you ever think about like doing, that? uh, <laughs> did you ever think about doing uh, like a traveling exhibit or anything? Well, you know, um, I did a big auction, uh, with a lot of stuff that was in, the, been there forever, all the stage sets and everything that's gone. But I've been working with Michael McLeary from Rainbow and Todd Singerman, who was manager of Motorhead and the mayor of, of West Hollywood, Lindsay Haworth. And uh, we, we, we got it passed already. We worked for two years. We're now going to get a uh, walk of fame, just like they have at Gorman's, but it will be gold records instead of stars, and it go, will go from um, Tower Records up to Doheny on both sides. And what we're trying to do also is um, get one of, the, um, one of the big developers that are putting up a hotel to put a, a, a museum in there. And that's what oh, I would put the right. stuff in there. I would yeah, learn it on awesome. the museum. 
Yeah. Well, my vote, if it has any weight, <laughs> is a traveling exhibit. A traveling, yeah. Yeah. By, by places like mine who have away. just fans that love and adore Ronnie James Dio and everything yeah. about him. That's great. And not only you know, Ronnie, I, I mean, like you yeah, said, with, everybody, with uh, everybody, Motorhead, yeah, yeah. I would yeah. put my vanilla fudge drum set in there, but oh, unfortunately, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, but unfortunately yeah. Vinny ruined it, so I can't oh. do that. <laughs> that's that's such a lot, brother. That, that's Is that when him and Angelo too, took over your place while you were out on tour? Yes, yes. <laughs> we, no, we already, this was before we, that. We already told that story. <laughs> but that's a good yeah. idea. No, yeah. No, yes, think, it is a very good idea. I think Metallica did that actually. I think I saw that in uh, in uh, where was it? Detroit once they had a traveling uh, a traveling museum. I, I will. I would love to be a part of that. I would Ron, you should do that. Would, You're the I promoter. Would, uh, financially, be a part of. It. I think it's just amazing stuff that people. Yeah. You know what? I'm um, I'm 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 an Italian American, and I'm also president of the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame. It's a museum, so I'm very understood. Mm -hmm. I understand uh, very much about you know curatorial sciences and that kind of thing. And and people just love this stuff. They connect to it. And and if you got the trumpet and guitars and and clothing mm -hmm. and other things, I'm telling you, people just need. Especially they get to be our age. You know, we're getting. Hey, what about there. the outfits? Hey, wa hey, watch our age. Come on. Yeah. Let me That's tell true. you a story. Let me tell you a story as you're a sports fanatic, okay? As Ronnie was, big sports yes. fanatic. He had this big, humongous, uh, ripped up shirt um, with somebody, because I'm not into sports, and obviously I'm English, so I don't know much about American sports. This was a while back. And he had this thing, and it was a Wayne Gretzky on it. I was like, what the thing is uh -huh. this is? And I threw it out. It was it was too big for him, he, and it was torn and tattered, so I just threw it in the trash. So you had a, real a shirt. Wayne Gretzky yeah, he jersey went, autographed. He was really, really <laughs> And you threw it out because you thought it was just a jersey that was too big for him. Oh, well, I was oh, going through this stuff. Well, what the hell is this? I saw his last game at the LA, at LA Coliseum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! You know, one thing I did see to Wendy, and I don't know to you know your your feelings on this. I've never, I haven't, uh, I haven't heard your feelings on this. But uh, the hologram, I thought it was really good. I thought it was amazing to see when, when you, and I'm sure you went through this whole process and this thing with the hologram. But oh, yeah, without yeah, getting yeah, too yeah, deep into it, I, I'd like to know when you first saw it, was it chilling? Was it heartwarming? Did you? Was it a moment? No. <gasps> when I first saw it, I cried. Mm. Uh, then I got used to it because it wasn't Ronnie. And then uh, we took it out. The first one was not that good. The second one was a lot better. Um, but I've decided that I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, I've decided I want real Ronnie. So we're working on the stage set with the Dio band, uh, which we're going out in March. And um, so we all have, um, instead of, Instead of having the hologram, it will have film of Ronnie, mm. and oh, yeah, with good. the live band playing and and with special effects and everything else. So that's what we're working on. I've been working on it with Paul Dexter um, and a bunch of other people, and also the Eye Illusion people who did do the hologram are doing a bunch of special effects for us with it. So I've decided to. I never say never, but you know, technology is, gets different every day, every day, every day, and mm -hmm. I just decided that I wanted to see real Ronnie. Yeah, it was pretty good. trippy when I saw it. I was, I saw it on on YouTube, and it was. Uh, I think I saw the first one, and mm -hmm. it was oh, it was pretty. It was it, yeah. it was uh, pretty spectacular, actually. It uh, blew it's my pretty mind. Pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. we can do it technology. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's a good thing. That's amazing. We got I think you're that. right about the footage. Is uh, that's kind of what Cher does. I saw Cher, and she had Sunny, and they did. I got you, babe together mm -hmm. and just with a screen mm -hmm. showing him on the screen and singing yeah i think that yeah. um, queen queen does it as well yeah, yeah, i was gonna queen say does queen it, does it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Also yeah so. a little bit different to that because we have all these great effects that are, are like 3d effects it's almost like going into like um what's that that ride at disneyland where you go through and it's like a 3d effect that's what we're working on right now yeah, so yeah. um yeah, you're so, talking about the haunted house where they go through and uh, you see the no 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 i'm talking about what is that it's a cartoon guy and you sit there and you go and it's like he takes you like as if you're on a roller coaster 
that's mm-hmm. what we're working on. Oh we're yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like 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 the Star Wars, Star uh, what was it Star is it Wars? The, uh, yeah, you go through like a it's like yeah. a three D thing. <laughs> it feels like you're moving. Yeah, you're, that you're yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what that you was mean. that was Jimmy Bain's house. <laughs> <laughs> God rest his soul. Oh, oh, man. Such a we missed him. Yeah. We all missed yeah. him. What yeah. What, guys? Let me throw this out there to all of you. What? You know, um, obviously, Ron has been gone uh, a while now. What do you think now in 2021? What would he be working on right now? What do you think? Would he be getting oh, involved in making he, films? Yeah. Yeah, I think he'd be, I think he'd be still, still performing, still writing songs, and I think he would go into producing. He really wanted to produce young bands. Yeah. I think mm. he would do Which that. Which gives me yeah. a question: When yeah. Ronnie produced you, Paul, and you got in the vocal booth and you're singing, and Ronnie's on the other side, what did that feel like? <laughs> Intimidating <laughs> as hell. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You and know, you but have, what was you really have a great voice, Paul. You yeah. Know, well, what was really Ronnie knew that too. Oh, he could. He he brought some of the best stuff out on me. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, we did some stuff at Sound City, what we used to call Sound Shitty, but uh, yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we also did some stuff at my folks' uh, studio with Ronnie, and uh, yeah, there's some stuff. There's um, there's some stuff that was never released from Rough Cut that actually Ronnie, uh, we did at Sound City. And uh, Craig Goldie actually played guitar on it. And I can't think of the songs right now, but uh, yeah, yeah it. it was it was amazing I it. too. Yeah. I bet you do. I have it in the vault. <laughs> you have, you have I everything. Have I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm be trying to think of the songs, you know. Really. But uh, recently we just released a uh, Rough Cut with just me, Amir, and Matt. Thorn with Carlos Cavazo as a guest on uh, on it, and uh, it was a small label, but uh, you know uh, the other two guys decided uh, David and uh, Chris Hager to start their own rough cut. So uh, I guess we were just kind of the guys called me up and said, "Hey, we worked on this stuff in 2017. Do you like your vocal parts? Do you want to do anything? We want to. There's a small label that wants to release this, and uh, a mere I uh, had been an orgy and they kind of erased anybody that was an orgy. So it was kind of a thing just to let the fans, they were being a little deceiving to the people out there. And it seems like everybody keeps coming back going, you know, my voice was rough cut. And, and so, uh, we got a lot of fans coming back on there that, that, uh, are really happy with the record that we put out, which was, it's, it's called rough cut three. And it's uh it's a trip. It's just the three of us. And Carlos decided to, jump on it and i'm trying to get carlos to jump in on the king cobra i'm calling yeah. him actually after i uh, we get done here and yeah. uh and uh because we've got a lot of material written yeah and, that's uh, great that you're gonna be a good record road. Actually, yeah absolutely yeah. and when you're working on the Dio band i am i am because we have the as i said we have the re-releases coming out in march so we're going to tour in march and uh yeah i'm, I'm excited about it uh we've got well we we got uh, craig goldie um, Simon Wright, um, Bjorn Englund, um, Oni Logan, and I'm um, looking for another singer because um, Ripper Owens was there and he was, uh, he's gone with KK now, KK's Judas Priest. So we're just doing that, we're looking at stuff and going through things with that. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, yeah. On behalf of all the fans, thank you for, for keeping his memory and his music alive. Um, and, all the time, still, all, all the time. That's and, my job in life. Mm-hmm. And, and still coming up with new ways and even, you know, making sure that everything is at the level that Ronnie would want it to be from a production yeah, absolutely, standpoint. Absolutely, quality absolutely. Product. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. bless you, Wendy, for keeping it alive and mm-hmm. freaking I'm so grateful just to even know both of the uh, the brothers here and and because oh, yeah, they're like yeah. they're like my brothers anyways, you know, yeah. I just yeah. I love yeah, them both. They're, they're, we're all family. We're all family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul, we, are. we fired you as the other brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, I'll never he forget. Does it to me every week. It's hey, okay. I'll never forget that we booked we booked <laughs> Vinny a room at this place oh, around that the corner. Play. Excuse my language. Uh, uh, and it's it, and, the and Artesian it's got Hotel. The Artesian Hotel, right? 
and Carmine's <laughs> staying at my house, right? And we're, we're actually working on either it's the King Cobra record or it was the Vargas with, with uh, I think no, it was no, King Cobra. It was, it was King Cobra, wasn't it? Well, why was Vinny there then? No, well, we then he was doing a show. Oh, then he had a gig. Oh, okay. Then he had a gig. So anyways, I have an extra, I got an extra room with a blow up bed in it, in the studio. Right. And Carmine's in the guest bedroom. And so then he calls and, and this place oozes of sex. Cause that was what's Carmine's. That's what his reaction was. So I pull over there in the Cadillac. Oh, I remember that. Place. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. So I pull over there in the Cadillac and he goes, you wait here. I'm going to go get Vinny because there's music going on. You, no, no, no. We were, at your, we were at your house. It was 3 in the morning, 3.30. And uh, then you guys dropped me off at this hotel. Right. And it was nice. Had right. All over. I'm like, okay, it's 3.30 in the morning. Get some sleep. And then at 4.30, the after hours party started in the hotel, which was so loud. So <laughs> boom, and it boom, was boom, boom, boom. Gay. Oh, I mean, it was it oh, oozed of sex because Carmine comes out and he goes, I'll be Ooh. right out. I'm going to go get Benny. This place oozes of sex. And so I'm parking right by the front door so they can come in and get his luggage in the car. And I'm watching what's going in there. There's, you know, just anything you can think of that's going into this place. And uh, so we went back and picked Benny up and brought him back here to the house. But uh, That's I'll, the I'll only never hotel. forget that. It's got a big sign on the side. I was just in Vegas, right? And for $8,500, you could rent out oh, the whole Oh, that hotel. place. That, yeah. that place. It's off, please, off the strip. So the next right, it's right off, of, right off of Sahara, right <laughs> as you get <laughs> yeah, yeah, off. Yeah. Right by well, the I can tell you, I can tell you, yeah. we, when, when we get to the point in the show, we start using words like oozing, I think we've come to the end. So I want to thank Wendy. <laughs> I want to thank Paul. And hey, Ron, I hope... hey, Ron, you got any tissues? <laughs> oh, please. I do have a sock you could use. Anyway, um, thank you so much. I think I think our new theme song will be Send in the Clowns. I think that's the appropriate. Anyway, Paul Shortino, God bless you. Thank you, Wendy. What can we all say on behalf of everybody, all the Dio fans, all the rock and roll fans, we love you and thank you for what you're doing. And uh, Drum yeah. Monster, Carmine, what can I say? I Like I was telling Vinny earlier, Carm, you know, we had this little week off kind of a thing with the recorded thing. I honest to God missed you guys. I don't like these weeks off. We don't do that. So yeah, next no, week will be live. We got I a great show. That. Look, Every no matter what Thursday. Vinny says, I missed you too. Hey, all Carmine, right. Carmine. <laughs> There's your, there's your computer. I thought you sent hey! it out. Hey! Hey, no. I thought you sent it out. Come on, no, man. No, 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 no. The Cubase didn't work yet. Every hey, Benny, uh, guys, I got to get between these brothers. Every, I got to hey, stay between call me. you about uh, my uh, PC. I've got Mac on the Pro Tools, but I got this PC that I need to talk to you about. Yeah, call me, me too. <laughs> All right, guys. Every week we are here. Artists on Lockdown hanging up banging Thursday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern with my brothers Carmine and Peace, Vinny Epicy. We love you so much for supporting us. Make sure you, you hit like, you hit share, tell everybody you know about this show. Our, uh, our followers are growing every week. We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio. We're all over the place. Artists on Lockdown hanging up banging. We will see you next week. I'm Ron Onesti. Thanks for joining, guys.